All right, so this is gonna be a little bit of an experiment. I'm actually in a coffee shop right now, so no idea how the audio is gonna show up. But I am working on a photo from this last trip to LA and Vegas. Um, this was a shoot I just did with Masumi Max. There's a lot of great shots. A lot of them are really dark. Um, but the one I wanna start with is um, uh, let's see here, I'm done. <clears throat> it's probably one of these. Um, I found a photo where she was uh, glancing down, and lately I've been on this kick where I want to do photos where um, expressions are a little different than the usual for me. I always like the lock onto the eyes, but um, yeah, right here. Here we go. I'm going to start this one over. I actually got about two or three minutes into it, and I decided I wanted to use this for the recording for Patreon. So, um, I opened this in Bridge. I'm not sure what anyone viewing this works in. I know there's a lot of uh, people that use Lightroom. I tend to use um, Adobe, Bridge, and Lightroom together. Um, I, I, get, I get better results, and, and a lot of the way I edit is different than most photographers. I can't really run my stuff through a batch process um, or edit the same way you would with scales and uh, levels in, in Lightroom. Um, these days the work I'm doing is closer to digital painting than it is just editing. But when I open a photo like this, the first thing, you know, these, these settings are all, let's see if I can, I don't know if I can put these back, let's just put these back for the time being. I'll put these all close to zero so you can see how I start. So this is more or less what the photo looked like it was when it was taken, and uh, it's pretty good. Um, the guy I learned from, uh, Jim Gavanis, uh, he's a documentary photographer, but he really, really um, drilled into my head how important it is to get your photo close to the way you want it in the frame, and I still try to do that. There's a couple things I'm probably going to tweak uh, as far as the uh, composition. You'll see what I mean when I open it, but once I open this in bridge, the raw file in bridge, I'm going to lift out some of these darks so they're a little less dark. Um, at the end here you're going to see they're going to come back, but for the time being I'll just lift out these darks like so. And then I don't absolutely love these little hot spots, so I usually turn the, the highlights and the whites down a little bit. <coughs> and then the last thing I do is just punch the clarity a bit and then open. So this is going to open a photo here in Photoshop. There we go. And um, this is where I start working with the, uh, the next um, composition changes. One thing that I do all the time now is I will go up here to um, go up to uh, lens correction. And under custom, I will change the vignette. To, uh, to lighten the vignette. The reason I get that is because I shoot with a 35 millimeter lens on a uh, full frame camera, so it, ca it causes a bit of a vignette. So I don't, I don't particularly like that. I know a lot of people do, but it's just not a look I go for. And then sometimes I'll tweak other things, like here at distortion, sometimes I'll, I'll try to balance out that little bit of a distortion. This will actually curve Masumi inward instead of bubbling her outward like that. And, and that's one of those things I just have to decide per photo. This particular photo, it, I, I go up about, add about a 3% distortion. And then, um, yeah, then I'll open it. Now, when it opens, it's gonna actually change it to a layer. It's gone from a background to a layer. Um, you can see that right there. And right now, with this shot, um, one thing that's kind of irking me is this horizon line that goes right across the back. It's just a minor detail, but I get OCD with some of my shots. So what I'll do is I'll do Command T and um, you know drag it down here a little and transform it, make it a little larger, and then turn it just so slightly, um, kind of re 
positioning my horizon line so it's not as obvious that it's curved like that. Um, yeah, that looks about right. That doesn't bother me as much, at least. Uh, there we go. And then when I accept that, there we go. Now the next thing you have to do, if, if you're going to make any changes like that, is you have to flatten that layer. So now it's back to being a background, which is what I want. <coughs> and now I can actually start going in and making edits to her face. Now, um, this might not be the best example because Masumi's face is so freaking perfect. Um, there's not much to change. She's an incredible makeup artist, so um, you know there's not much to do. But uh, when I do make changes, and, and this is going to differ a lot from other photographers, I tend to use the um, patch tool. And I usually give it about a 3% feather. And I'm gonna go in here and kind of just grab little pieces that are, little pieces of her face that are not even. I like to do this because it pulls some of the texture of the skin along with the change. So it doesn't look like a painting or a mannequin at this step. It's tedious, it's really tedious. One photo for me anymore takes close to anywhere between 90 minutes and two hours and uh, I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna get really really involved with this first tutorial because there's a lot more to discuss um, but yeah I'll sit here and I'll go through and I'll just kind of move things around until it looks a little bit more the way I want another thing I should mention is because I shoot with available light um, a lot of shadows show up, a lot more shadows show up than you might see with a studio photographer. And I have to correct for that. I love the look of low light and uh, available light, but yeah, sometimes like little things like this on the corner of the mouth, that's going to be much darker than you would see with a studio shot. But you can see like right there, that was a nice transition right there. To, and you just move it to different parts of her face. I'll do this for... Sometimes this, this part of this process can take 30, 45 minutes, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it about there. Um, the next step is I add a layer, and now I start taking my eyedropper and grabbing color and matching the color to the face on a separate, this just continues the blending. Um, there you go. Yeah, you'll see there's certain, I don't know, a lot of this is instinct. I can't really explain it other than just saying it's, it's like an instinct. When I just kind of blur my eyes and look at the photo, I can just tell where it needs to go. You know, I just want these smooth transitions, no blotches or anything like that. And if you get to a point where you're not really happy with the way it's coming out, it's on a separate layer, so you can just delete it. But, you know, for now, I'm gonna do one more thing here, just on this side of the face, um, like this little spot right here. If I steal that color and then I put down just a couple drops, just a couple splashes with the brush, um, you'll see that'll kind of disappear right there and it looks natural. And if you have any areas that you went too hard or it overlaps like a crease of the face, you can just kind of run in there with your select tool with a little bit of a feather and you can just, let's see here, you can just delete it. I know there are probably way more efficient ways to do this. I, I'm not like a huge technical Photoshop wizard, so I'm, anyone that's watching this can probably think of ways to do it that are way better, but this is just my way. All right, this little spot here stands out, so there we go. You know, when you zoom out, you can kind of get an idea how that's looking. See, that looks pretty good. But again, Masumi 
is near perfect to begin with. So, you know, depending on who you're shooting, um, this can be more challenging or take longer. Um, that looks pretty good though, for now. So the next step after I do that is I run up to the um, liquify tool and just make little changes. There's not much. I mean, again, dealing with Masumi, so not much to liquefy. Uh, I'll pull some of this in here. You got to be careful with fabric because you, you don't want it to look liquefied. Like if I grabbed the arm right here, that would distort the jewelry and it would be very obvious. You know, I usually sharpen up the chin a bit. You'll see right there. Uh, there we go. Um, if you're photographing fashion or, um, you know, working with female models um, or like drag queens or anybody that's really big on fashion um, and style, usually they prefer the hair volume up, like the volume of the hair to be brought up a little bit. Uh, and uh, that looks pretty good. Again, not much to do. There's been times I've done, you know, liquefying can be an art in itself, but now you can go back and you just see these little tweaks. Nothing much there. But again, she's covered up for the most part. Um, little things down here like the legs. Um, doesn't hurt to just take a few minutes to run in there, grab some color, and splash it right on the thigh just to kind of keep a nice you know, consistent color. A lot of times, if you're in bright light, you'll, you can see like veins through the legs, and you know, this is a quick way to fix that. Now, right here, you can see there's a slight cast shadow. So when you pick a color, you gotta pick that color. You, you don't want the color you used on the other side of the thigh, because that was getting more light. So you know, right here, put down a little bit of that, go a step lower, grab a little bit of this part of the thigh, there we go. And now, this part's tedious again. You have, it, you can do it different ways. You can use like, um, what's it called? Uh, uh, a mask, that's another way you could do this. But I've gotten pretty handy with my Wacom tablet and it just is easier for me to quickly run in here and follow the trace of the fabric I'm working on or the wardrobe or whatever's in the way. Just do that quick. And then delete it, that way you don't have your, your brush hanging over the fabric. You can delete this here now and see the difference in the thigh. You know, there's like a little tiny spot right here I missed, so... There we go, do that. Alright. This is kind of cool. I actually enjoy showing, uh, like doing a tutorial on this. I've never done this before. It's become so, it's like such a mechanical process for me. I don't really ever think about it. But hopefully this is gonna shed a little light. For... All right, so that's good. I mean, not too much there I would do. Um, once that's all taken care of, you can start messing with the color and the processing. Lightroom users are going to have a lot of options. I know they have a lot of great presets. I don't particularly use any presets or um, actions when I edit just because every photo tends to be its own thing. And if you look right here, when I go back to, you know, this is where I was shooting, it's the Artisan Hotel in Vegas. If you look at this, like, it's such a range of uh, photos. Like, we shot these outside. You know, and these are still pretty dark. And, um, but these, these are, you know, very high key and bright. Some of this, there's white backgrounds and then you jump up just a little farther and we were shooting this super dark room. It was like a wine cellar and that wouldn't work. There's no way I could just apply the same action to that and have them look consistent. Everything tends to be its own individual shot when I edit so you know coming back to this though you know last step is sometimes I do these little tweaks I'll go to curves and uh, I'll select this is usually what I do 
I'll break it into red, green, and blue. And then just kind of mess with it a little, drop one lower than the other. That gives it like a green look. Tilt this up here. Or if you do the opposite, that'll get red. Yeah, I kind of like how that looks. And then green, I'll bring down and then back up. Yeah. Now, when you do that, that's going to affect your, your other colors. That'll affect your blacks. You see right here, the blacks are looking kind of blue, uh, kind of purplish. So after that, I'll run up to, let's see here, selective color. And then you have control of that. You can pop, bring the face back out a little with the red. Drop back down to my blacks and um, just affect the blacks. And uh, you know, I, I like, I tend to like darker, darker photography, as you probably know. Neutrals, if you just punch the yellow a little, that'll give it a warmer feeling. Your greens are going to come out a little bit more. Your blacks are going to look a little truer to like a to like a, a warm black. I think. I'm trying to think of what that was called when I was in college. Payne's gray. I think Payne's gray was more of a bluish black, but this is more of a warmer black. And that's it. That's about where I would leave it. Um, I mean, I can I can get really OC and and obsess over it, but you know, like right now, I'm noticing her face here is a little warmer than I'd like. You know, sometimes if another part of the body looks just fine, but the face or, you know, if it's not consistent, I'll just go in and I'll mess with that individual part of the face. I mean, here I might just like desaturate it just a tiny bit. Um, and you should start to get a color that matches her hands more. Yep, like that. That looks pretty good. You know, it's, it's hardly noticeable, but this is what I was saying earlier about being closer to digital painting than editing. I mean, sometimes I really have to paint stuff in. Uh, that looks pretty good. I wouldn't do much more than that. You know, it should, it, this should produce a beautiful black and white. When I do my black and whites, I usually tend to select a, a black that's close, closest to the bottom, but not all the way at the bottom. And a white that tends to be closer to the top of the whites, but not all the way. And then I'll just go up and I'll hit uh, gradient map and that'll give me a nice, tr oh, that's uh, the opposite. There we go. This gives me a nice even black and white where the, uh, the whites aren't exactly blown out and the blacks aren't exactly so black you lose detail. So if you zoom in here, you can kind of see still there's some texture on the corset and the dress so, uh, and the hair. It's just a little trick I learned over the years. It's a little better than using the, the black presets. Uh, if, if you're still worried about those hot, hot spots, you can actually go to selective color, go straight to your whites, and you can actually just pull those down a little bit. There you go. And that's it. Um, that's just a quick edit. This was my first time doing a, you know, a video that would appeal more to the photographers than you know, people that are enthusiasts of the models that I shoot or the uh, just the appreciating the images themselves. So I'll get better at these as I go. But, uh, you know, that's a good look at the first one. And um, thank you to everyone on Patreon that's seeing this and uh, just everybody that supports me on there in general. It's, it's, become, it's become and it's becoming a major, major um, part of my my life and my career the first of the month comes around and it's just so, such a relief to be able to pay one or two big bills with you know with uh, the support of the people that are following me and support and uh, pledge down here so okay next one will be a little better this was uh, just a trial run and I did it in the middle of a coffee shop but uh, thanks so much